Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. We're here today with our first host call of the weekend, answering our community's questions each and every Saturday, each and every Sunday, about a half dozen questions for each, pulling up the big Ask Cabral document right now. Uh, literally thousands upon thousands of questions have been answered over the last five years and uh, excited because we're actually doing even more of that uh, as of late. So we've done some office hours on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, uh, definitely check that out at uh, just Stephen Cabral, my name, Stephen with a PH. And then also uh, answering quick questions. I can't answer long questions, but quick questions by text. That's just at stephencabral.com forward slash text. Uh, and, you know, really just reaching out to my team and especially joining the Cabral support group.com, which is a free private uh, Facebook support group. So there you have it. You know what? Let's dive right into the questions today. Most people are familiar. They've been listeners of the show. They know the weekends that we answer uh, questions that have been written in to ask Cabral. All right. Let's get started. First question today is from 7-Eleven. So 7-Eleven, I like to give you the backlog. Uh, today is what? Today's 9-4. So if we do the quick math on that, that is about seven weeks. Not about, it is seven weeks, all right? So seven weeks behind on answering your questions. Uh, the good news is that they do all get answered in the order they come in. All right, first question is from Simon. Simon says... Hi, Dr. Paul. I've listened to all your podcasts on fasting and detoxing and now doing a daily 12 to 14 hour fast uh, in an almost weekly one day reset fast. I'm curious though, as a Vata Pitta who is a bit too stressed and getting a bit less rest than I'd like to, though otherwise healthy, is a day fasting putting my body under more stress than I should be? Also, rather than getting the mental clarity many speak of with fasting, I tend to get brain fog and lethargy. Aside from being inconvenient, is this a concern and is there anything I can do to counter it with impacting the detox and autophagy benefits? Thirdly, I'd love to hear your thoughts on going lunch to lunch instead of dinner to dinner. I find skipping dinner easier and it f and figure it means I'm not breaking my fast with a big meal close to bed and also benefit from a night's sleep on a very empty stomach. Thanks so much. All right. Well, you brought up a bunch of good questions, not one, but a bunch. So, um, the answer is this. Fasting is a stress on the body. So if you're doing a one day uh, fast and you are stressed and you're actually feeling worse uh, each time you do this, not just one time, it may not be for you. However, I just want to make sure that you may want to be doing the one scoop of the daily nutritional support. Uh, which is liquid fasting then at breakfast, daily nutritional support at lunch, and another one mid-afternoon. Uh, you can just separate them by three and a half hours. So like it'd be like 8 a.m. Uh, what's the math on that? 11.30 and then around three, right? And then you can have your dinner at night. So you can do that and then you support all of your detox functions so you're not having any uh, you know, ups and downs and blood sugar as much either. So you could try that for sure. Yours might be a blood sugar issue. You might be dropping too low in blood sugar. You could certainly test that with a glucometer when you start to feel brain fog, or it just may not be for you. And, and if it's for right now, right until you're less stressed. So what you may want to do is um, your quarterly functional medicine detoxes and be able to get through that for the uh, benefits. Uh, and you might just go with your 12 to 14 hours every day. So if you don't, what I'm talking, don't know what I'm talking about right now, just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and look up one day reset diet. And that will tell you uh, about that once a week fast. All right. Uh, Simon's up next again. Hi again. I have a couple more questions about the one day reset. Oh, sorry, Simon, you also asked about lunch to lunch. Lunch to lunch is fantastic. If you can do lunch to lunch, great. Stop eating, let's say, lunch on just say one day, let's just say Sunday, and then you go to lunch on Monday. And so it's 24 hours, but it's never like the full day with kind of missing meals. Uh, and that would be, yes, it would be even better. It just most people find it more challenging because they're, you know, partner doesn't want to eat alone or they're not having dinner then with their family, whatever it might be. But if you can do lunch to lunch, no, that's great. 
I think I got them all there. All right. So Simon's up next. A uh, couple more questions about the one day reset. Would taking a typical liver detox supplement with milk, thistle, dandelion, Cassandra, et cetera, during the one day reset assist with liver detoxification. Also, is it okay to swap out some shakes with bone broth or even lemon salt water if I'm not hungry? So many other questions, but I'll leave it at that. Thank you for giving me so much time and energy to the community. Oh, giving so much energy and time to the community. I'm happy to help. Thank you. Um, so these are all great questions. You could certainly use a liver detox supplement, but really, um, yes. So yes. But if you're just doing the overnight and you're basically, think about it, you're already doing an overnight fast. All you're really adding is another 10 hours to it. Let's say you normally fast till 8 a.m. Okay. So what are you doing? You're going from eight to 12, it's four hours. And then you're going to like five o'clock or six o'clock for dinner. So you're looking at 10 more hours. Uh, honestly, I think you'd be fine. We just, I mean, we have thousands of people do this uh, on Mondays or any other day they want. And they just use the daily nutritional support, which has uh, detox factors, electrolytes, protein, amino acids, etc. So that's that. Um, can you, you know, and if you don't want to do that, can you just do lemon water and uh, with or without some sea salt? Sure. Like no issues at all. You could just do water. I mean, it just depends on the individual and, and what their body's able to handle. That's really it. You know, a lot of my podcast from last week's show was about your body's ability to handle stress. And the less that you give it in terms of nutrients, well, the more stress that it's under, right? But then over time, uh, as long as you don't overdo it, the body actually becomes more resilient. So it's funny. That's called a hermetic stressor. I have a podcast on that as well. All right. Good questions. Uh, I think I got them though. Lindsay says, hello, in today's podcast on 7-Eleven, you mentioned if you have lower blood pressure, you're unlikely to be able to drink as much water as you need without salt. Can you elaborate on that? I have low blood pressure and have a hard time drinking water. Wondering if there's a correlation. Sure. Yeah. I've mentioned this many times, Lindsay, but let's see what, um, 7-Eleven was. That episode, oh, that was on a house call. Okay. Um, sure. Let me elaborate on that. So, if you are someone with low blood pressure, not always, and again, I can't provide any medical advice. I can't provide any treatment protocols or diagnosis. I just want to let you know that. But what I can say is this, many people are low on salt. They're low on sodium, meaning their body's functional levels of sodium. Do you have enough sodium to keep your heart beating? Of course you do. No doubt about that, right? However, a lot of people with low blood pressure, they feel like they have more energy, their brain fog lifts, um, they have more zest, more ambition, more vitality if they have low blood pressure and they add a little bit of sea salt to their water. And uh, the reason for this is that salt, sodium, does help to balance blood pressure. It keeps it at a nice higher level. A lot of people say, oh, when you have high blood pressure, you need to eliminate salt. Well, there are certain individuals, genetic-wise, that are more susceptible to salt. However, salt is never an issue if you drink enough water and you have it balanced with potassium. I repeat, salt is an issue only when it's not balanced with enough water to push out whatever isn't needed, as well as potassium, which balances sodium. Magnesium is another cofactor, but we'll leave that for another day. So, Lindsay, um, you might be someone that's low blood pressure and potentially even low blood sugar. So, let me add a little bit to that. If you're low blood sugar, like 75 and below, most below 70 is technically you're dropping into lower blood sugar. And you add more water to your blood, blood's about 90% water of the plasma, then you're further diluting your blood and your blood sugar is going even lower. Medical doctors will never tell you this. They've never been taught this, but it, it is um, not, it's not common sense for sure, but from a physiological perspective, you can see easily how this happens. So, um, again, I see remarkable turnarounds when people sip smoothies, right? They, they have low blood pressure, low blood sugar. Uh, they might add a little sea salt, um, and, uh, and they're good to go. So, I, I mean, again, it's, it's for each individual. I can't tell you exactly what to do. Uh, but if you have low blood pressure, most people can add a little sea salt to their water just to taste how much people say, just to taste. Whatever feels good for you, when it's too salty to taste, you know you've added too much salt. So start with less. All right, Megan's up next. Hi, Dr. C. I've been going back through previous shows, and there seems to be a fair few men, a fair few that mention C-sections and aftercare with scar tissue and whatnot, but I couldn't seem to find any that look at how to prep the body before having a C-section to help support the mom and the baby. Also, did you have any tips 
thoughts about exposing the baby with the mother's bacteria to try and help support the baby's microbiome that will that it will be missing, not coming through the through the vaginal bacteria and anything else that the mom can do in preparation of a C-section birth. Thank you so much. All right, yeah, this is a great question. So. Here's the thing. Um, everybody, hopefully people that have been listening to the show know that I don't recommend um, anything unsafe or even potentially unsafe during pregnancy, which means that I don't recommend very many herbs. Not that they're unsafe, but we don't use herbs. Herbs are medicine. We don't typically use them during pregnancy. We use our vitamins. We use minerals. I've given you the whole protocols before um, for you know women and, and pregnancy. Typically, I recommend daily nutritional support. I recommend uh, 500 milligrams in addition to that of methylfolate. I'm typically recommending a food-based iron, uh, daily probiotic, some omega-3, and um, and that's pretty solid, right? That's gonna that's gonna be good. So now tips like to prepare yourself for a C-section. There's not a lot that you can do to prepare yourself for a C-section, the actual area, except you can be moving your body more. You can be exercising. You can be taking good nutrients, your vitamin C, your zinc, you're not, not high amounts, but the normal amounts that you should be taking. And that's going to allow you to heal better and faster. That's clinically proven exercise, good nutrients are going to help you heal faster. Okay. So that's that part. Now, should you expose your baby to maybe some of that vaginal based bacteria when born after a C-section? It's an interesting idea because that is what happens. Basically, um, a baby's moving down the vaginal canal and it's swallowing bacteria. Bacteria, it's being exposed to the bacteria on its skin on the way down. Could you expose the baby to that? You know, it, it's a good question. I don't know why I've never thought of that before, but it's definitely a first. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, this is from this is from Megan. So appreciate you bringing that up, Megan. And I can't say yes or no right now because I'd want to research that first. It seems like it makes sense. It seems like it makes sense, but I can't say yes right now without me going back and researching. So I hope you understand that I only give you advice that I know to be true, uh, that I've seen work in my private practice, and that I believe to be safe. All right? But but I like the thought process. All right. Megan has another question. This is our, what, fourth question, fifth question today. Hey, Dr. C, following on my previous question about prepping for a C-section, is there anything in particular that I can do to reduce my chances of developing any post-surgery blood clots? Thanks. Okay. Oh, this is a good follow-up. Okay. So now it's post-surgery. Well, so we know vitamin C, we know our glutamine. We just get that from your amino acids and your proteins or eat enough protein. Uh, that's really important for new moms is to eat enough protein because again, you're repairing your body. You're giving life to the new body. That's your baby. And uh, so it's important that you're really feeding for two and, and protein is very important for that. So protein, um, with zinc and, and all your good vitamin C and maybe even some advanced collagen support, you might add. Um, but let me just add one thing. So before surgery, though, you'd want to stop your omega-3s because omega-3s can act as a blood thinner. So you would just tell your doctor, hey, here's the supplements I'm taking, and they'll probably have you stop taking those uh, omega-3s a week uh, to two weeks before surgery. Okay. But great before that, because they're helping with as a normal blood thinner of the body. Now, other things that help with blood clots, I'm not necessarily recommending these, but you could talk with your doctor about them, because again, I can't give you medical advice, uh, or uh, Hawthorne and uh, Butcher's Broom and Chestnut. Is it Horse Chestnut? Horse Chestnut, Butcher's Broom, Hawthorne are great natural, um, I can't say anti-clot, but they're great for the blood and circulation and the veins as well. So you could look into those and, uh, and that might be helpful. Uh, but besides that, we're kind of getting into medical advice territory and, and I can't provide you with medical advice, but a healthy body, again, going back to exercise, exercise as well. All of these things are great for circulation. And um, after surgery, whenever, whenever you're able to get up and start moving, get up and start moving. If they allow you to, um, make sure that you are not lying down in that hospital bed uh, all day, 
uh, long. Get up, move your body, get that blood flowing. Every time you take a step, what happens is the gastrocnemius, which is the calf, pumps blood back up to the heart. This is very important uh, for post-surgery blood clots, etc. All right, good questions. And Nick's up next. And believe it or not, that's our sixth question. Hi, Dr. Ball. Love the podcast. I'm writing to you seeking help for my wife. She has a long history of mental illness, schizophrenia, psychosis, uh, catatonia. She spent three weeks at the psychiatric hospital last winter, spent six months in uh, psychosis without any help from medication. She started working with a functional medicine doctor last summer that ran a stool test and she suspected a parasite. She was prescribed certain medications uh, put her on SBI Protect, immunoglobulins. Within a couple of days, started coming out of the psychosis. Over the last few months, she started having another setback after trying stopping the immunoglobulins. Started getting brain on fire feeling, a lot of head fullness and pressure. We ran the big five and confer- confirmed she has some elevated candida, aluminum, and uh, TPO antibodies close to 500. She's currently on the parasite protocol and then the limited yeast and heavy metal detox. She's about to undergo a lumbar puncture to test for NMDR receptor encephalitis. It's been a long, slow process. I would really appreciate any more wisdom you could give us on this issue. Thanks. All right, Nick, I know you wrote in on 712, but over the last couple of weeks, I've done a bunch on schizophrenia, uh, children's learning uh, issues, et cetera, and anxiety, depression. Let me get those for you, okay? So let's see here. Oh, here we go. Episode 2020, how gluten and glutamine cause learning disabilities, autoimmune issues, and neurological damage. And it's on glutamate. So you want to check that one out uh, for sure, Nick. So it's on glutamate, not just gluten. And then episode 2027, the dangers of yeast and why it may not be a superfood. And that's linked uh, as well to schizophrenia. So this is really important because you gave me a lot of information. If immunoglobulins help that you add them in, well, then for sure there's an immune issue, right? Not enough uh, secretory IgG. And also there's most likely gut permeability. So you're doing the limited CBO. You might want to do the full CBO. I can't tell you to do that. Definitely work with your practitioner. Uh, and if they said that, then then listen to them. But then you're going to want to do the most likely the CBO finisher. However, the CBO finisher has glutamine in it. And if there's a breakdown in your wife's glutamine processes in her body, then the glutamine um, might exacerbate issues. It's rare, but again, it's possible. So in that that case, you'll just use zinc carnosine and that will be helpful. But believe it or not, if you have a glutamate issue, things like bone broth will exacerbate it. Okay. Really, really important that we help seal up that gut wall. And, uh, we, we do these, uh, functional medicine detoxes, the heavy metal protocols, things like that, but also really watching for food sensitivities. Anything could be a food sensitivity. It could be lectins. It could be oxalates. It could be glutamate. So you just have to find out what your wife's triggers are and do less of that. Uh, once you find meals that work, You keep doing them, even though it's boring, and then you begin to slowly add in other foods to see if that's on the okay list or if that begins to fill up the rain barrel. Remember, all of this is basically the rain barrel effect. When it overflows, we have the psychosis. When you're low, you can kind of get away with things, even if they're not the right foods for you, but then you eat that too much too often and it overflows again. So Nick, I feel for you. I understand where you're coming from. Uh, But again, with enough time, enough effort, enough patience, you'll be able to get there. So I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning into today's show. I'll be back tomorrow answering six more of our community's questions. Have an amazing weekend. Thanks so much for just tuning into today's show. And before you go, I want to make sure that you know that for the very first time ever, we are running a big 21-day functional medicine detox. So if you've been looking for a full body reset, a whole body reset in order to improve your sleep, improve your mood, lose a couple pounds, decrease the inflammation, rebalance hormones, get rid of those food sensitivities, and really feel so much lighter, so much more energetic energetic just at the end of the seven days, but hopefully you're continuing on for the 21 days. Well, that is what we have going on this September. We are starting as a community on September 20th. We're all joining together. You can start a week before, you can start a week later. That's 
that's okay. But we are joining together for a 7, 14, or 21-day detox. But the difference this time is this, that we are not providing support just for seven days. We're providing support for the entire 21 days. We want people to make this their best and healthiest fall and winter ever. While most people, and again, rightly so, most people are worried about their overall health, and I get it, we want to make sure that you feel strong, that you feel optimized, that you are ready to go into this fall and winter based season, and we want to be there for you. We are going to provide you free support every step of the way, free support videos every day. We're going to answer your questions every day and just be there for you again as a community with over 12,000 people inside of this global health community. It's an organic group of people, like-minded people that all join together. We didn't advertise, we didn't ask them to join, but we love it. People are referring other people to Cabral supportgroup.com. So that's the free support group. But the other thing is this, I'm doing the 21 day functional medicine detox. I am going to do my functional medicine detox starting on September 20th. If you'd like to join me, I love being able to do it with hundreds and typically it's thousands of people that are all joining together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together this offer at stephencabral.com forward slash detox. It's just Stephen with a PH. So it's S-T-E-P-H-E-N-C-A-B-R-A-L.com forward slash detox. What you're going to get right there is you are going to get the free detox course valued at $300, the free support uh, for life inside of the Cabral Support Group. Uh, If you're not already a member, you are going to get uh, a free detox as well. Meaning we're doing a buy three, get one free. So it's a hundred dollar value, completely free for you uh, while supplies last and during this week. So all this week, while supplies last, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash detox to save $100 and join us this September on your own 7, 14 or 21 day detox. Take care, everyone. Let us know if there's any questions.